Hello guys, Yulia Bone over here. We're going to complete chapter six by talking about indexation and nominal and real interest rate. So indexation, this is when um, a dollar amount in the contract corrected for inflation automatically. So by law, by law, if it says in the contract that, for example, your wages or your salary, probably most likely, or uh, some kind of rent agreement indexed for inflation, it means that that each year that agreement the dollar amount that mentioned in that agreement have to be corrected for inflation so if you are renting something and let's suppose you know your rent is two thousand dollars a month this year if we had a certain inflation rate over the year then by law if it's mentioned in the contract um, this dollar amount have to be indexed for inflation, you know, for the next year. So you're going to have, if you are, if you are renting, you're going to have to pay a little bit more. So therefore pay attention. So indexation, when this is when the dollar amount is indexed for inflation, guys, remember based on the consumer price index inflation, not based on the GDP deflated inflation, but based on the consumer price index inflation. So, and um, a lot of, um, you know, multi-year labor contracts, you know, they automatically adjusted for, for inflation. And COLA over here, it, mean, it means cost of living allowances. So COLA means cost of living allowances. And this is pretty much uh, means that um, whatever contract you have, for example, Social Security um, or some kind of, um, you know, um, yearly uh, salary agreement. So it's automatically have to be corrected for inflation. So uh, based on the um, color clause, a lot of times, you know, there are contracts like that. And once again, if we're talking about indexed, okay, um, indexation, um, if the dollar amount is indexed for inflation, it means it have to be automatically corrected from year to year based on the inflation rate, based on the CPI. So uh, moving on to real versus nominal interest rate. So as we already know that uh, correcting economical, uh, economic variables for the effect of inflation, it's very important, you know, for a lot of economists, for a lot of uh, business owners. And the concepts of interest rate, it's, you know, it's very necessary to understand because it involves comparing these dollar amounts in different times. So it's, um, you know, the basic of it is very important to understand. Just think about it. If you're going to go on the bank and you deposit money today, let's suppose you, you deposit money on the saving account. Let's suppose you, you deposit $100. So you earn in some kind of interest rate, isn't it? So that interest rate that you earn in, it's actually going to be nominal interest rate. So what does this nominal interest rate means? It means that, well, you put money in the bank, bank is promising you that in the future, you're going to get your money back. Plus you're going to get some kind of rate of return. So if the nominal interest rate was 5%, then you're going to get 5% more money from the bank sometime in the future. So therefore, if we're talking in um, one more thing, when you, for example, borrowing money from the bank, remember, you get the money today, but you actually promising bank to give that money back with certain interest rate that is going to be involved once again in the future. So therefore, it's really important to understand the concept of interest rate. So once again, if we're talking about nominal interest rate, so nominal interest rate is going to be the one that is not corrected for inflation. So once again, if you put money in the bank account, you earn in some kind of interest rate, it's going to be nominal interest rate. This 5% is going to be nominal interest rate. It's going to show you how fast the amount of money is growing on your account. So nominal interest rate is going to show you how fast the dollar amount on your account is actually growing. Okay. If we're talking about a real interest rate, a real interest rate corrected for inflation, 
and real interest rate is going to show you the purchasing power of your account. So keep these two uh, definitions in mind and I'm going to give you an example and you will understand a little bit better what is the difference between nominal and real interest rate. So the formula for real interest rate is going to be nominal minus inflation. So um, a lot of times I'm writing real interest rate equals nominal minus inflation or from this formula you can say that nominal interest rate equals real interest rate plus inflation. So please know these two formulas, kind of keep them in mind, write them down somewhere. And uh, let's get to the example that's going to show you um, kind of a little bit more understanding of what is the difference between nominal and real interest rate. So here you go. Guys, if I'm going to ask you a question, would you prefer or uh, what, what is going to be your choice? Would you like to have $1,000 today or you have a choice. You can take this $1,000, put it in the bank account, and it's going to earn you 10% interest rate. Remember, if I'm talking about this 10% interest rate, it's going to be nominal interest rate. This is usually nominal interest rate. So, and then a year later, you're going to have $1,100. So my question is, what would you prefer? Would you prefer to have $1,000 today or would you prefer to have $1,100 a year from now? And a, a lot of times I hear different answers. Some people, some students usually saying, you know, I would like to have $1,000 today. Some saying that I would like to have $1,100 a year from now. And in reality, the answer should be, it depends. And it's going to depend on what happened with inflation in our economy over the course of this year. So let's suppose, let's suppose we're going to take a very first example, very first example, and we're going to have an example where the um, inflation in the economy was 0%, there was no inflation, and let's suppose you like to buy a certain product, and the example is going to be very kind of um, outdated or not realistic. So let's suppose you like buying CDs. So you like to buy CDs and the price of each CD is actually $10. So today the price of each CD is going to be $10. So we're going to kind of to assess, would you like to have $1,000 today or $1,100 a year from now? Let's suppose that inflation, inflation rate over the course of the year was actually 0%. So if you're going to take your money today, let's suppose you spend all your money on CDs, you're going to take your thousand dollars, you're going to take your thousand dollars, we're going to divide by the price of CD, that is ten dollars, and therefore you can buy 100 CDs today. So if you decided to put money in the bank account, remember inflation rate was actually, inflation rate was 0%, okay, this should be 0%. So if inflation rate is 0%, it means that the price over here of CD is still is going to be equal to $10. So therefore, you're going to take your $1,100, your money grew over over the course of this year on the account. So you have more money right now. Remember, I told you that nominal interest rate is showing you how fast the dollar amount is increasing on your account. So here you go, you were earning 10% nominal interest rate. Your dollar amount grew over the course of the year by $100. You have $100 more. So now you take this $1,100 you divide by the price of CD, the price of CD didn't change because there was no inflation, therefore all of a sudden you can buy 110 CDs. So now if you kept the money, what happened? You can actually purchase more goods with that money. And this is a kind of showing that the purchasing power of your money has increased. Just think about, remember, a real interest rate showing us the purchasing power of your account. It's equal nominal minus inflation rate. Remember, nominal interest was 10%. That was 10%. Inflation was 0%. So therefore, the purchasing power of your account actually grew by 10%. And this is what we're trying to understand. Would you like 
thousand dollars today or 1100 a year from now and guys i understand probably you're going to say you know what miss bone i need to pay bills right now i need this thousand dollars today i understand that but we're just looking at this situation and trying to understand the purchasing power of your account so therefore once again this real interest rate showed us that the purchasing power of your account increased by 10 percent so let's take another example so second Second, let's suppose that inflation rate actually over the course of the year, inflation rate was 6%, 6%. So again, you have a choice. If you keep in money today, you're going to have the same thing. You have your $1,000, you buy in CDs, you divide by $10 because the price today of CDs is $10, you can buy your 100 CDs. So this is what you can buy with this money. If inflation rate in the economy is going to be 10%, then remember the price of CD is going to increase. So the price of CD at the end of the year, let's suppose you choose to keep the money. So you're choosing the money, you're choosing to keep the money and you're earning 10%, 10% interest rate. So a year later, we're going to look over here. How many CDs will you be able to buy? So the price of CD right now, all of a sudden is going to be $10.60. I'm just going to put it right away over here you will you know how to calculate it you take ten dollars multiply by six percent it's going to be 60 cents and then you add ten dollars so the price of cd is going to increase a year from now now you have eleven hundred dollars a year later now the price of cd is ten dollars and sixty cents and if we go into divide it now you can buy 104 cds Okay, so once again, guys, remember this $1,100 that you have at the end of the year, this is showing how fast the amount grew on your account. And this nominal interest rate is showing you that your amount increased by 10%. So nominal interest rate is telling you how fast amount that you have on your account was increasing. Now, remember, real interest rate showing the purchasing power of your account. Once again, this is nominal minus inflation. Remember, nominal interest rate, you earn 10%. You have 10% more money on your account. But we have inflation rate in the economy this year. So inflation was 6%. Therefore, the purchasing power of your account all of a sudden going to be 4% now. Just pay attention over here. The amount that you have on your account increased by 10%, but can you buy 10% more goods and services at the end of the year? And the answer is no, because now we have this inflation rate that was 6%. So therefore, really, you can buy only 4% more of goods and services. Remember, when inflation rate was 0%, here you bought 100 CDs. At the end of the year, you were able to buy 110 CDs. So you're purchasing power of your account increase by 10%. Now, I'm going to take different mark over here. Now, once again, you were earning 10% interest rate. The amount on your account increased by 10%. Okay, that's your nominal interest rate. But can you buy 10% more goods and services? And the answer is no, because now we have this inflation rate in the economy. And therefore, the purchasing power of your account only increased by 4%. So therefore, please pay attention on your uh, test, on your quizzes. If they're asking about purchasing power of your account, they refer to real interest rate. If they're asking you how fast the amount of your account increased, it's actually talking, they're talking about nominal interest rate. So really quick, two more examples. Third, let's suppose that inflation rate, inflation rate in the economy was actually 10%. What are we going to have? Remember today you still can buy 100 CDs, isn't it? But then if inflation rate is 10%, remember then the price of CD all of a sudden is going to be $11. Therefore, you take your $1,100 that you have a year later, if you choose to keep the money for a year, you divide by $11, and therefore you can buy 100 CDs. So when inflation rate is equal to, um, um, to your nominal interest rate, then the purchasing power of your account stay the same. You can buy 100 CDs a year later, and you were able to buy 100 CDs you know, at the beginning of the year. 
again i'm going to put over here real interest rate is equal nominal minus inflation nominal was 10 percent inflation was 10 percent so therefore how much more goods and services can you buy zero okay you can buy zero more so you can buy the same amount of goods and services as you were able to do it at the beginning of the year and let's suppose the last one that inflation rate inflation rate in the economy was actually 12 percent so once again today you can buy 100 cds if you decided to keep the money a year from now remember the price of cd is going to increase and i believe it's going to increase to 11 dollars and 20 cents because because of this inflation rate it means that the prices in the economy are increasing all of a sudden let me let me make a line over here so you have your 1100 dollars you divide by 11 dollars and 20 cents and now you can buy only it's like 97 point something let's suppose you can buy only 98 cds so what happened with the purchasing power of your account? The purchasing power of your account has actually decreased. Even though, guys, pay attention, you have more money in the bank. Yes, you put the money, you were earning this 10% interest rate. Yes, this 10% nominal interest rate showed you that, yes, your account increased by $100. But the question is, what can you buy with this $1,100 right now. In reality, you can buy less goods and services than at the beginning of the year. Why it is so? Because inflation rate was higher than the nominal interest rate. Remember, once again, the real interest rate equals nominal minus inflation. Uh, let me do this one. Nominal was 10%. Inflation was 12%. You can buy 2% less of goods and services at the end of the year so i'm going to conclude this video i hope you know more about nominal and real interest rate